Every server has to shut down at some point. But in production, shutting down a server isn't as easy as flipping a switch. It's all about grace. You need to stop new requests from coming in, let ongoing requests finish, and also make sure that any background go routines you might have complete their work, all without disrupting the system. So how do you design a graceful shutdown process that's reliable, efficient, and production ready? Let's break it down step by step. We have a simple Golang program that creates and starts a server on port 8000. If I go to this routes function, this simply returns a new serve max with the root endpoint pointing to a get home handler that simulates some work using time sleep and then simply writes back the string home. So this handler takes about 10 seconds to run. Right now, if I start the program using go run and then make a request to localhost 8000 and stop the program using control C, the request is terminated. Ideally, the shutdown process should wait for all ongoing requests to finish. To make this happen, we can go to our main.go file and we'll do fumpt println shutting down server and then if er server shut down and this takes in a context, for now we'll just do context background and if the error is not nil, we'll print printf shut down with error and pass it the error. And let's also do one afterwards. So we'll do shut down complete. Now, if we try again, so go run, curl, and then stop the program, it's still not working. And as you can see, none of our print messages are here. The reason for this is this listen and serve here is blocking meaning that the code afterwards will not be executed even if you press Ctrl C. To fix this, we should run listen and serve in its own Go routine. So we could do go func and then this will execute and paste that in. So now this will run in its own Go routine and this will continue to execute. So if we start our server again, you'll notice that it shuts down right away because, well, there's nothing stopping this code from executing. So we should fix that. We should stop this from executing until we receive a shutdown signal. And we can do that using the signal package. We can do shutdown, stop, and then signal, notify context, and this also takes in a context background, and then a list of signals we want to listen for. We'll do syscall, sigterm and syscall sigint. Sigterm is for when the operating system wants to terminate the process gracefully and sigint is when we press Ctrl C. Now notify context returns a context and a cancellation function to which we should defer a call such that we release any unused resources. Then we can use the shutdown context to wait for the done channel. So this will block the execution until any of these signals are received. So this part will not execute until we receive a shutdown signal. So now if I start the server, go run and then make the request, stop the program. And as you can see, the request is still going and we'll have to wait for 10 seconds. The request is finished and the server is closed. At the same time, if I run the server and then make a request, close the server and then open a new tab to try and make a new request, will not be allowed to do so because the server is in a shutting down state. So while the server is shutting down, it will no longer accept new requests, but it will still serve the ongoing ones, which is great. Regarding the context used, we could also leverage timeouts, but not for the shutdown signal. This should only execute whenever we receive the sigterm and sigint signals. It should not be time-based. But this one, well here we could enforce a time-based shutdown. We could do... I'll create a new context. It will have a cancel function, context with timeout, context background. And we'll give it, let's say, five seconds. 
defer call to cancel and then we'll use it here and this means that the server has five seconds to shut down otherwise it will be forced to shut down so now if i run the server make the request and close it the request will fail because it needed more than five seconds to process and the server will shut down with error saying context deadline exceeded so this is a great way to make sure that the server doesn't hang in indefinitely. We could also increase this to something like 20 seconds to be a little bit more forgiven. Now, while the server shuts down gracefully, there's still a gap we need to address. What happens to any running Go routines we might have? Let's explore. I'll go to handlers and create a new function. We'll call it background work. Let's say fmt println background work started, background work ended, and in between we'll use time sleep to simulate some work being done. So we'll do 10 times time second. Then we'll go here and run go background work such that this runs in a go routine. And now if we start the server, and make the request. We see background work started, but once we close a program, no matter how long we wait, we won't be seeing background work ended because the Go routine was forcibly closed, potentially leaving our server in a broken state. So we need a way to keep track of all running Go routines and wait for them to finish. And for that, we can use the sync package. We'll go back to main, and create a wait group variable, which will be sync wait group. And now whenever we want to run a go routine, we'll need to increment the wait group. So here we'll wrap this within a self-executing function. So we'll do func and then execute it. And then before we call go func, we'll do vg add one. And then here we'll have to defer a call to vg done. So once this function executes and we reach the end of this function, we'll execute vg done, which will essentially subtract one from the wait group. So you can think of the wait group as a glorified counter. With this in place, we can go back to our main.go file. And right here, before exiting the main function, we can do fmt println waiting for go routines. And then we'll do vg wait, which will essentially block the execution. So it will stop the main function from exiting while waiting for the go routines. And then we'll do fmt println go routines finished exiting. And now if we run the server again, make the request, background started, close it. We'll see we are waiting for go routines and we are still waiting, waiting, and then background work ended, go routines finished, exiting. And that was it. That's how you can gracefully shut down your Golang server. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff.